following is a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. Hello, everyone. This is Rob Denninger with Com- Comfortably Zoned Radio, and I'm here with Jack DeGraw, and we are talking Yankee baseball. How are you doing, Jack? Good. How are you today, Robert? I'm not too bad. Yankees uh, swept the Rays today, beating them 12-1. to They now have a, a three-and-a-half game lead over them. Uh, and a seven game lead on the Red Sox. Things are and they're seven and three in their last ten games, so they've had a better better week than the last time we talked. Yeah, the last uh, last four days have been uh I, I don't think you can ask for anything better. Yeah. And uh we got Stanton back. He didn't play today, but he played yesterday and the fans were already booing him after one at bat. Yeah, they they can be uh they can be tough in New York, but you know if they give Stanton a chance and he stay he stays healthy, uh, you know he's an outstanding player. Yep, and and to make room for him, they had a option Clint Fraser down to AAA, and he was none too happy about that to say the least. In fact, he didn't even show up for the game AAA game yesterday. Well, I can I can understand him, you know, being. Uh, upset you know he he, he's really produced with the bat you know he's had troubles with defense you know he had a terrible game against the Red Sox but you can work on that and you know the thing is Rob I can understand he being upset and then they tried to make a controversy some people in the press saying you know he didn't show up last night the night before but they got 72 hours to show up and I mean he did report today you know he he's down there in AAA, and the the manager, uh, you know, Jay Bell said he's going to play. Uh, you know, he's going to start playing center field, and with all the Yankee injuries, I'm sure we'll see him uh, up there shortly. So, you know, uh, yeah. he's upset, but uh, he's a terrific prospect. Yeah, he and he proved that he he belongs, you know in the majors and I think he need needed yesterday just a couple of days just to digest everything. I mean it, it was a hard pill to swallow being sent sent down, especially with the numbers he was you know putting up. He really did help. Yeah, and I he, mean go ahead Robert, he batted sorry. two he batted two eighty three with eleven home runs and thirty four RBIs and in fifty three games for the Yankees. Yeah, I mean, he's batting cleanup. So uh, I can understand him being upset. You know, the Yankees have so much talent in the outfield. And, you know, a lot of these younger players, if they don't produce right away, are going to get blocked because, you know, you got Judge or he's going to be there for a while. You got Stanton. Yeah. You got Hicks. And, I mean, the Yankees got another decision, you know, that Cameron Maben has been playing outstanding. And then, you know, you got Brett Gardner. So, I mean, an argument could be made, you know, you could keep Maven instead of Brett yeah. Gardner. So there's another decision yeah. that has to be made. Yeah, prior prior to today, uh, um, Maven in his last nine games was batting 441 with four home runs, which were hit in four consecutive games with five RBIs, 12 runs, uh, 853 slugging percentage, and six multi-hit games in nine, in nine games. Yeah, there, there's definitely decisions to be made. And I, I, I tell you, Robert, I, I think, you know, maybe they should keep Maven instead of Brett Gardner. I mean, Gardner gives you the defense, and he's a fan favorite. But, uh, you know, I don't know. You know, I, I don't think the Yankees will keep him after, the, uh, you know, this season because, you know, you're going to bl- block uh, Clint Frazier, at, you know, if they don't get a number one uh, starter. So there's there's a lot of decisions to be made. Yeah, I mean Gardner, he's he's still a good base runner. Uh, he can play the outfield, but I mean, he is. He's only batting two thirty three in sixty nine games. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you like that defense. You know, if you get in, if when they're in the playoffs, the Yankees will need that defense. But I I think you know if you've got like uh, Clint Frazier, you know, there's a guy who can knock in. 30 hit 30 plus homers and knock in a hundred runs, you know, and I think his natural position is left field. So I I think, uh, you know, Gardner has been a, you know, been an excellent Yankee. He's done a lot for the team, but I think this is, you know, his swan song. Yeah. And uh, about Clint Frazier, I mean, his bat speed is 
one of the quickest I've ever seen. He can really turn on a pitch. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's really something special. I mean, uh, he, he gets up there, and sometimes, you know, he looks like, uh, you know, you know Sheffield, you know, <laughs> hitting those line drives, and Dave Winfield, I mean, he can really, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. crush the ball. <laughs> Gary Sheffield, that's a I, I forgot about him, but he was he was another one who had great bat speed. Yeah, I mean he he was he was terrific. He had the best bat speed, him and Winfield, that I ever seen. And I talked to an old timer friend of mine. He said he used to hit line drives, uh, talking about Sheffield like uh, Lou Gehrig. So, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> that, that's something pretty special. And uh, CC Sabathia got his uh, 600, 600th win today. I mean, 250th win today. Yeah, I mean, uh, CC, you know, just when you think he's going to be, uh, you know, he, he doesn't have it anymore, he turns in an effort like today. So that was, you know, a great thing to see him get his 250th win because, like, you know, you mentioned a few weeks ago, you're not going to see too many guys get 250 wins or even 200 anymore. So it's, a you know, a great achievement for uh, CC. Yeah, and DJ LeMay, who, again, he had another multi-hit game. I mean, the guy just seems to have a multi-hit game almost every time out. He really has been, one, you know, their, their MVP, I think, in the first half of the season. Yeah, he can play all over, and, I mean, uh, he, he just he uses the whole field, and Clint Frazier does the, the, the same thing. I mean, even though Frazier's a power hitter, he uses the whole field. But LeMay, you, is just a terrific uh you know, hitter and fielder. He can play third, he can play second, and even he can fill in at first. So, you know, that he, he's a great pay, pickup. I agree with you, Robert. He is the MVP so far. For the yeah, game. and and Gary Sanchez hit his uh, 21st home run today. Three-run shot. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, you remember last year, everybody was – a lot of people were down on uh, Sanchez, and this year he's just uh, turned it around, and he – he does a great job too calling pitches. I mean, I think the game Tanaka pitched the other night. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was giving kudos to uh, Sanchez. So, I mean, Sanchez has some problems defensively once in a while, but, uh, you know, he, he, he does a nice job back there. He, he, so, you know, Tanaka gave him a lot of credit for the great game he pitched the other night. Yeah. Um, he, like, he's done a better job of blocking behind the plate, framing pitches, calling the game. He has been really – he's been impressive this year, especially considering the troubles he had last year. Yeah, and you don't find a bat like that at the catching position, so. No. And, yeah, and sure. uh, Glaber Torres hit a grand slam today. He, he's got his average up to 283. He has 16 home runs and 40 RBIs. <laughs> and they got all-stars up and down the lineup. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know what? You know what's incredible, Robert. I was I was looking, you know, with with Sanchez, uh, Torres, Judge, and Andujar. Those four guys combined are making two point six million. Yeah, and they got they're under team control for for several more years too. I think. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you know, they're they're loaded with young players. So. Uh, it, they're going to be good for a long time, the Yankees. And and the one thing they are, I, I do think they're going to have to do is go out and get uh, a top of the line starting pitcher. And they've been linked to Marcus Stroman of Toronto, Trevor Bauer of Cleveland, Matt Boyd of Detroit, and the other two that's interesting is Zach Wheeler of the Mets and Noah Syndergaard. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, Robert, you know, we're going to see something probably, you know, in a month or so because, you know, right now the Yankees aren't desperate. So, uh, you know, a yeah. lot of those teams are going to be falling out of the race and, you know, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to have to give away or trade away a Frazier or Floreal or something like that, you know. So it, it, just sit tight, and I think in a, in a month or so you're going to see – uh you know, some of the teams falling out of the race are going to have to make a move. And I think with uh, uh, Scherzer from the, the Nationals, he wants, you know, he's, he has a big contract. You know, maybe yeah. with, with Baumgartner for the Giants, you know, he's a free agent after this year. So then maybe the Yankees could, you know, throw in a couple prospects and get him for a, 
couple months and for the playoffs. So that's a possibility too. Yeah, Hal, Hal Steinbrenner today said he's willing to go over the highest penalty luxury tax threshold, which is $246 million, million, if the Yankees must improve in 2019. As of right now, they're $20 million under the luxury tax. But he says if, if they have to and must improve, he's willing to spend the money to do it. Well, yeah, like I mean, you said, right. Yeah, like you said right top, now, there. Uh, yeah, if they can get a top sp- uh, starter, Robert, I mean, uh, you know, they can make that money back with the, the World Series tickets and T-shirts and stuff. So, uh, you know, that, yeah. that shouldn't be an issue. <laughs> no. And the Yankees, oh, what is it? They got four games with Houston. Is it in Houston or is, are they back in New York? No, these are, these are home games. They got the four games with the Astros. And then they got the three games with Toronto, Toronto, and then they head head over to London. That's right, to play Boston. Yeah. Yeah. And then they come back, I guess, for the Mets. Yeah, the Mets, and I think they go up to uh, Toronto. Uh, And I I was reading a little bit about the the series in London. I, I seen pictures of the stadium. The field is AstroTurf. And I think it's a five or six hour flight. I don't know. I'm not really too keen on the, you know, going over to, to London to play. I can understand playing maybe in Mexico yeah. and uh, Japan because, you know, they have great baseball over there and they've sent guys to the major leagues. But London, to me, that just seems like another major league baseball uh, money grab. And yeah, um, I don't know if you heard about Montgomery, but I, they had to shut him down because of a shoulder problem, and they're sending him to to New York for an MRI. Uh, did you hear anything about that at all, by chance? Yeah, I, I heard they sent him there uh, today. He he come up. He threw. Uh, he was throwing a bullpen the other day, and they shut him down after fifteen pitches. And another thing I heard is Severino. Uh, in a, in a couple in a week or so is going to start throwing off the mound. Uh, but Tantis, they don't really know what's, what's going on. They said he's making some improvement and Herman, they got some good news there about him, but I think they'll probably shut him down for a month or so. So, you know, if, if I, I think Herman will be back between the Tantis, Severino and Montgomery, if they get one of those guys back, I think that that'll be good. Yeah, and like you said, Tanaka pitched a, a great game, and Hat pitched pitched well in his last outing, which you know that's a plus. Right now, those are your two best pitchers on the staff, I think, followed by Paxton. Well, I, I think you know, like a game like Hat pitched the other day, and Tanaka was just terrific, and CC was good today. But if they, yeah. you know, they can, they get games like Hat pitched. And like CC pitched today, you know, he give up two or three runs in five or six innings. Uh, you know, uh, that that's good enough to win. And you know, what what's your feelings on uh, on and Carcione getting him in the trade? I was I was shocked, but uh, he he leads the American League in home runs, and basically he'll be the DH, right? I mean, you would have to put. Stanton, and when when Judge gets back, Judge will be in right, and Hicks will be in center, and you'd have to play Stanton in left, which means Gardner will, will be coming off the bench, right? Yeah, and I, and I think another plan, uh, plan with Encarcio, and they're going to, they might switch him and Voight, you know, from first base and stuff. And like you were saying, you know, have Stanton, DH, and, uh, you know, Gardner in the outfield. So, you know, they, they got to mix and match, but I mean, man, they ought to score a lot of runs. Yeah. And the thing is when judge does come back to make room, do you think they'll, they'll keep Maven and send down a pitcher or do you think they'll designate Maven? I think they, they might send down a pitcher, especially when they're going over, you know, to play in London because, you know, yeah. they're playing on AstroTurf and, you know, with all the Yankee injuries, you know, I, I, I think they'll, they'll, they'll bring Maven over there and, uh, you know, it, it, there's some 
tough decisions to make. But uh, you know, with all the with all the injuries and stuff, I you know you don't want to play. Uh, judge all the time and you don't want to play Stanton nah. all the time. I mean, they rested Stanton today after playing last night. So, yeah. and even with Didi, you know, they gave Didi uh, some time off. So, you know, they, they got to be, you know, be smart with these guys and don't play them too, too often. Yeah. And, and Luke Voigt, you know, coming into the season, you know, I wasn't sure if he was, a, was legit or if he was just, you know, like Shane Spencer, just one of those things that just happened in set late in the year. And but Voit, he's he's batting two seventy. He's got seventeen home runs, forty six RBIs. Um, he's he's having a pretty he's having a pretty good year, a really good year. Yeah, he and the thing I like too, Robert. I mean, he's got a good eye at the plate. Yeah, you know, he he has a knack of getting on base, and he does well defensively. You know, he anything yeah. he gets his glove on, he catches. So. Uh, He's been a plus defensively too, as well as being a, a big asset with the bat. Yeah, and I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen him dig the ball out of the dirt on a throw to first base. You know, I mean, so he he has he's he's been really good defensively. Well, you know, when guys if they're having trouble on defense, the only thing you do in the off season you get the coaches and you just work on your defense, and that's what uh, you know Voigt's done, and that's what uh, I'm sure Clint Frazier will do. Yeah, and um, you were telling me before that uh, Florio played yesterday or Monday. Yeah, I went, I went over to, uh, you know, Jack Russell Stadium in, in Clearwater where the Phillies used to train, and uh, Florio was playing the other night, and he had a couple hits, and he stole the base. and he's So he's down here in high A. He's got about 40 at-bats, and he's hitting around 300. I think the plan with the Yankees – is to get him to double A at some point this season and, and get him some at bats because you know uh, he looks like a terrific par- prospect, but he hasn't had any uh, at bats above a uh, high A ball. So I think you want to get him in double A and you know triple A next season, getting 500 at bats and see you know see what kind of player you have with him. Yeah, and. Um... There's two players I want to ask you about who I haven't heard their names mentioned in a long time, and that's Greg Bird and Troy Tulowitzki. Do you think we'll ever see them in a in a Yankee uniform again this season? Well, Tulowitzki, I haven't heard anything, Robert. The last thing I heard, yeah. they said home. Bird is down here in Tampa, and I, I, I hear he, you know he's he's working out, he's hitting off a tee, he's running. And I think at some point, you know, I don't know when, you know, we'll see him, uh, you know, getting a, a rehab assignment. It'll probably start out here in Tampa. But I, I think the thing is, you know, just let his foot problem, let, let those injuries heal. Because maybe from the initial injury with his foot, it never healed 100%. So, I mean, yeah. I think there's no, you know, there's no desperation to getting back right now. So whatever problem he he's had, you know, let him let him heal 100 percent. And if that takes the rest of the season, so be it. Yeah, and um, with the Red Sox being seven games out, if the Yankees, you know, can win the next couple series, they can beat Boston and London. They could put some more distance between them. Yeah, I mean, uh, when the Yankees, you know, they when they played them in New York, they had a chance to get them nine and a half, ten games out, and the Red Sox got it down the to five, and now uh, they the Red Sox lost a tough seventeen inning game last night, so they're falling a, uh, behind a little bit. The Red Sox are scary because they, they just I just have a feeling that in September they're going to be within striking distance. Yeah. And this this Houston series is big too. I mean, Houston they're in first place and they have one of the better records at forty eight and twenty seven. The Yankees forty six and twenty seven. Um, big this kind of big series for them. Yeah, I mean the Yankees seem to play them well in uh, you know New York and stuff, but the, the Astros are tough. But I and I mean I think to get to the World Series, you know, you're going to have to go through uh, Houston. So. Uh, yeah. This is this is you know definitely a big series, but I think Yankees winning three in a row against the Rays, it's given them a little uh, cushion in their division. But uh, should be some good baseball over the next four nights. Yeah, and 
you agree that the Yankees will probably more than likely get go out and get a get a starter for the second half of the season. Oh yeah, and I think there's even a possibility they might get so, uh, so a bullpen guy too. I I don't think it's yeah. just going to be one pitcher. I think it's going to be two. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I think with the Yankees, you know, winning the series against the Rays and creating some distance. It just it, it doesn't ha- put them like in desperate mode, you know. They're not like five, six games out and falling by the wayside, you know. They've got some de- decent pitching lately, and they're in first place. So uh, I think Cash will just sit back and you know let some of the teams drop out of the race, and uh, you know maybe he can pick up some guys like you were saying from Toronto or Detroit, Miami, and you know teams like that. Yeah, and I, I know the Mets would probably never deal with the Yankees, but Zach Wheeler, he's a, he's in a walk year. He'll be a free agent after this year. And when the Mets were trying to acquire the catcher from the Marlins last year, um, the Yankees were involved in those trade discussions. And if the Mets would have gotten the catcher, the Yankees would have received Noah Syndergaard, but the trade fell apart and it never happened. It'd be interesting to see if the Yankees actually landed Wheeler or Syndergaard from the Mets. Well, I, I think it's a big stretch now for the Mets. You know, they're they're only a couple games under 500, but I, I think in the next week or two, if if they don't pick it up a little bit and start winning some games, then they might be in the, the sell mode too. At uh, you know, at the end of July, so uh, yeah. you know, that, that's something to watch too. I really thought the the, the Mets would. Uh would have a much better year than they're having right now. I mean, I thought we'd be talking about the Mets and Yankees and what kind of, you know, what a great season they're having. But the Mets, they they just haven't been able to put together. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been a little disappointed. I I, I still thought, uh, you know, Robbie Cano would, could still, uh, you know, be very productive. And, uh, you know, he's been hurt. And, uh, you know, when he's played, he hasn't been too productive. And, uh, you know, they're just uh, – you know, going nowhere, you know, win a few, yeah. lose a few. And, uh, you know, like I said, I think we'll find out more in the next week or two. Yeah. And uh, I, I would love to see I, Joe Girardi coaching the Mets next season because I have a feeling Callaway's not going to be around next year, especially if the Mets don't, don't do well the rest of the year. No, I mean, that'd be a good thing. Girardi knows his baseball. He knows New York. And, uh I think he'd be a good manager for the Mets or any team. Any team gets Joe Girardi, they'll get a good manager. Yeah. Um, is there anything you're looking forward to in this upcoming upcoming week? Well, I just hope they can keep on, uh, you know, Yankees just keep on playing like they've been playing. And, uh, you know, they've made some great moves getting on Carcione and uh, the pitching looks good. And uh, so uh, in five days, everything is uh, – change from a, a disaster mode to, uh, you know, to uh, uh, some really good feelings around the, the Yankees. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who's going to start against Houston in game one, but in game two, we have Paxton going and then we got Tanaka and uh, Hap. Well, t- tomorrow, I, I don't know, maybe they'll, they'll throw in Chad Green again and uh, Cortez yeah. and, you know, d- do that because, uh, you know, it would work the last time out. So, uh, and Green's pitched pretty well his last uh, two or three times out. So does Cortez. He's done a great job, too. Yeah. Well, this, is, this has been great, Jack. Hopefully, uh, when we talk Monday, the Yankees – would have taken three out of four and be on their way yeah. to another good week. Well, I mean, you'd like to get three out of four. You hope for uh, at least the, the worst you want to do is a split. But uh, so everything is a lot better from the last time we talked. And hopefully, you know, yeah. we get together on Monday. Uh, we'll have a lot more to talk about. We can talk about uh, the Yankees uh, signed the first round draft pick this year. Oh yeah, you were telling me, and he had 15 strikeouts, right? Uh, no, the, the first round pick was this kid Volpe from Del Barton in, in Morristown, New Jersey. He's the shortstop. He's down here working out. He'll probably be in uh, instructional league. And the last, uh, the number one pick last year, Seeger, the catcher, he's in Charleston now. 
and the Yankees have a 20 year old kid, uh, Debbie Garcia, who struck out 15 uh, Giants last night in Double A in six innings. So there's a kid to watch, uh, Debbie Garcia. Yeah, he, definitely keep an eye on him going forward for sure. Yeah. All right, Jack. Uh, this has been good. It's been fun. Hopefully the Yankees continue their winning ways, put a little bit more distance between Tampa and Boston. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how everything goes uh, in the next four or five days, and, you know, we'll get together again. Sounds good, Jack. Okay, Robert, thanks a lot. All right. Everyone have a good one. Take care now.